Okay, and as we um, um, employ these students to share their stories, how important is it to educate your participants uh, about the importance of maintaining university brand guidelines? It is extremely important. Um, you know, we do have a script. Well, not a script, but we do have, um, you know, an ending uh, to to these um, to these spots that we're going to do these video spots that we're going to do. But um, but it is very important because, you know, the the analogy that I use with Dillard in particular is that we have this fantastic university concert choir. Um, and one of the things we, we actually created um, a Write Your Legacy uh, brand training video. And one of the things that I said in the video is that you have all these different voices, all these different qualities, all these different approaches to singing, yet they are able to come together and sing beautifully, you know, for our annual Christmas concert. And so I think, <clears throat> excuse me, it is, it is very important for folks to realize um, that they can they can look at the campaign a little differently, obviously, because everybody's going to bring themselves to the campaign. But we all got to sing the same song. Hey, Chris, how you doing, man? Who are you? Thanks for joining. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Of course. Of course. Hey, I had a good time, uh, you know, uh, at the AMA when I first met you there in uh in November, and I, I figured I reached back out when I started that show um, because I was impressed with you holding the roundtable discussion back then. And you know, doing a little bit of research on you too, I didn't know you you had your own podcast. You know, that was for our edification. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sure do, man. Um, it's uh, you know, I, I I worked in radio for a number of years, so. I had to kind of scratch the itch, you know, so. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, I saw that you were a radio uh, a producer, on-air personality for almost 20 years. And um, yeah, then you were a director of public relations while you were doing that um, radio yeah. at Southern University of New Orleans. But then you made a switch to talent acquisition for a couple of years, right? Like six years or so? Yeah, yeah. And then why did you decide to go back into um a marketing and communications role after like six years in the talent acquisition industry? I didn't want to leave higher education in the first place. Um, I really started to enjoy the work and um, the university or the college where I was, unfortunately, things didn't work out uh, there. And so there were some budgetary concerns. And so I wound up having to uh, leave that college. And so um and so what happened was that a friend of mine was just, you know, she she had started this uh, recruitment firm and she she was talking to me one day and she goes, you know what? I need somebody with a PR mindset to do this work with me and I needed a job. And so um, and and I, and I found it very interesting and I actually wound up really enjoying recruiting. Um, so now I'm kind of stuck between how much do I love higher ed and how much do I love recruiting? But this opportunity at Dillard came up. And um, at the time, the president was a guy named Walter Kimbrough, who's also known as the hip hop press. And um, and he and I go back about, we have a friendship that goes back about 20 years with fraternity brothers. Um, and I really wanted to work with him. Really, 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 really did. And then on top of that, uh, the guy who wound up being my boss was someone I knew from high school. And I really respected his work as well. And uh, the guy who I was who I, who I wound up reporting to, his wife was someone I had known for about twenty plus years. She was the athletics director here, and she kept cracking this joke with me that I needed to come to Dillard because I would I would make up the A team. And so she said, "All we need is you." If we went, if she said, "Once we get you, we're gonna have the A team." And so all that kept going through my head, and so. When I saw that the uh, opportunity to come over and be the the Marcom director was available, I jumped at it, you know, and it was a recruitment job. I had only been in that job for seven months and um, I was talking to my wife and I said, I feel kind of rotten doing this because yeah. it's only been seven months. And she said, you really, really want to go work at Diller, go work at Diller. So, yeah, yeah so I got yeah, so I went ahead and I went for it and they, they I was fortunate enough that they um, had some faith in me. That's awesome, man. It's uh, always shows the importance of networking, you know, regardless yeah. of whether or not 
you work with these people right now, you never know what may come down the pipeline in the future. Right, right. It's really funny because when I was working in talent acquisition, I actually interviewed for an assistant director job here. Mm -hmm. um, but I was in Dallas at the time and I was new to Dallas. And, you know, I had, ju I had just unpacked my apartment and, you know, unpacked my stuff and all that stuff. And and I started a new relationship with a woman who is now my wife. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I was like, yeah, I don't think this is the right time. I want to see what Dallas has to offer. Um, and so I, I didn't take the job back then. But I actually kind of wanted the job. But the person I would have been working under at that time, I was thinking that we probably wouldn't have mixed very well. So I really made it a point to say, listen, I really want to be a Dillard. I'm not sure this is the right time or the right situation, but I do want to be a Dillard. And if I, if I ever get the chance, I want to come back to the table. And the guy who interviewed me was the guy who wound up being my boss later. Um, and so, uh, so when I called him about this job, um, he said, he said, come on, come, he said, apply, you know, We'll get you any interviews and all that other good stuff. And so, yeah, so it, it was a great story. And you're right. I mean, the network was really, you know, was really important in this case. But, you know, but I like I said, I'm really um, I'm really blessed that they that they felt that I could do the job um, friendship or not, you know, because I knew that made a big difference. That is very emotional, you know, really em you have really strong emotional intelligence not to just jump on the first opportunity there with the assistant um, director job, right? Because some people would say, I just want to get in and then I'll figure it out, right? But you were smart enough to see that it wasn't a good fit and then pull back and wait, but tell them that you are interested, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. With them, just not in that uh, capacity. So that's really smart. And it's something people need to think about too, you know, just um, be a little patient and things will work out in the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I really owe it mostly to the fact that I was a recruiter at the time. So I knew what kind of language to use. <laughs> I really, I figured it out. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was, and I think the other thing was I had a lot, of, I had, I had a good sense of humor about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I wound up working here, you know, actually, uh, Mark was the guy who was my boss. His name was Mark. I actually made Mark laugh a few times about that. And I uh, said, oh, you remember when I almost came and I would have ripped up the place because I wouldn't have liked who I was reporting to back then? And he was like, yeah, you it would have been a bad situation. You were really smart about that one. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, that's good. So since October 2019, you've been part of the A-team at Dillard. And you started a new brand evolution campaign called Write Your Legacy. I'm really intrigued about that. What is Write Your Legacy and why did you start it? So um, the so, the, so I'll say that we we actually had some resources um, to do a very thoughtful job of um, advancing the brand of the university. And so we contracted a company called Ology and when we started working with Ology, there was an immediate connection between us and Ology. Um, Ology actually said it best you know, because when I wrote the request for proposals for this uh, project, uh, one of the things that I, I wrote was I really wanted to be able to express what the value of the Dillard experience is boldly and unapologetically. And Ology in their proposal wrote, we want to teach everyone to speak Dillard. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And so the reason for the campaign is uh, that we, the reason we did the campaign is when I got to Dillard, I kept asking people, what do you find valuable about being here? And I found that there was no unifying language. There was not a clear, concise way that people could really talk about the the experience and i i couldn't figure out the disconnect people had very positive things to say about being here the alumni love this place uh the the students really like being here people enjoy working here but no one could tell me in a clear concise way what made it so valuable and so um i so what i did was when i when i started working with the folks at ology one of the things I said to them was, I want to front load this project with research. We need to 
focus. We need focus group discussions. We need surveys. I need to understand what the language is for this place. And eventually we figured out what the language was. They wrote a beautiful uh, uh, um, uh, positioning statement for us. Um, the value proposition was one that we really liked. And out of all of that, there was actually a, there was actually a theme that they came up with. And I was like, I like this theme, um, you know, but, the, but I think we need something shorter and it's easier to remember. So write your legacy was what branched off from the theme that they had. And the reason that we came up with write your legacy was the first thing is Dillard has um, a legacy of alumni that is absolutely, it, it is impressive. But a lot of people don't realize that they really, they don't realize how many great people graduated from Dillard and its precursor institutions, Strait University and New Orleans University, which merged to form Dillard. So we kept saying that that, that, that piece of Dillard's story just kept getting lost. No matter what we did, it would get lost. The other thing though was, there was the, the students who were here and the alumni were very insistent that they felt that they had um, a responsibility to really continue the legacy. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that we wanted students, current students to know that this is your opportunity. You know, we can give you all the tools possible, but this is your opportunity to do what you need to do. And you need to have some control and some maturity about this um, because this is kind of a different, you know, this is a different generation. And so that's how we came up with Write Your Legacy, you know, um, to, 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 to let our students know and our alumni and our other stakeholders know that the Dillard experience about is about your having the opportunity um, to create your own legacy. Um, and, and you have that opportunity to develop that next great alumnus who's going to be a Supreme Court justice. Um, you know, maybe we'll get a president of the United States out of this, you know. Um, but we, um, but yeah, but that that's what we wanted to do. And that's how we came up with the Write Your Legacy campaign. And then when it comes to social proof campaigns like that in, in higher ed PR, especially for schools that are interested to adopt something like the Write Your Legacy um, campaign, who should they focus on? Who should be their spokesperson for the university? Should it be current students? Should it be alumni, faculty, staff, or all of the above? I would say all of the above, because that's something that we're focusing on. We really want students to speak up more. Um, as a matter of fact, in the video campaign that we're doing for Write Your Legacy, we're featuring students, maybe a couple of alumni, but we're going to make it pretty student heavy. In some of the written pieces that we're going to do, we're going to feature alumni. Uh, we have a piece uh, that we are going to drop. Our first written piece for Write Your Legacy is coming next week, um, and it's going to be on an alumnus who graduated in 1953. His name is Dr. William Sutton, and he was president of Mississippi Valley State University. Um, and he graduated from here. He, it is the greatest story. He, gra he, he met his sweetheart here, um, his late wife. Uh, they both graduated in 1953. He was on a football team. He was captain of the football team. She was captain of the cheerleaders. She was Miss Dillard. Um, you know, he was in Omega Psi Phi fraternity. She was in Delta Sigma Theta sorority, which they are kind. They have a bond between one another. Um, but he, but when his wife passed away, he decided to endow a scholarship in her name um, at the university. And so, um, and we're going to drop that on Valentine's Day. So, right. um, so you know, so you know, we we have all these, uh, we have all these great pieces that involve them. And then for the faculty and staff, really uh, letting folks know uh, about some of the great work that we do. We have some great subject matter experts uh, that we're gonna uh, that we're also gonna feature as part of the campaign. But I think I think everybody has to do it. And the reason I think that is a big part of our position in the market is that community is our superpower. Yeah. Um, and I know that a lot of other colleges and universities can say the same thing, but Dillard has a distinct um, way of making sure that the students here uh, form this really nice, productive academic culture. And it really comes out of that strong sense of community. 
And it, you know, and 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 the same thing happens with the the faculty and staff. You know, we really enrich and we uplift one another because there's such a strong sense of community here. Um, and uh, and I think that is really what boosts the social proof for us uh, yeah. when it when it comes down to it. And when it comes to fostering a sense of community amongst your stakeholders, what's the most What's the benefit you get out of it? Do you get legacy students out of that? Or why is it so important to foster a sense of community amongst the Dillard, um, you know, people? Well, because, you know, one of the things I think a lot of people tend to forget about college is that is that college can be a rough time for a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of folks are trying to discover themselves. Uh, they are trying to decide which way to go in life. They're trying to figure out who to trust. And a sense of community is extraordinarily important because it it brings about a sense of belonging. Now, in the African American community, it's even more important because um, there are so many career paths um, that are un where African Americans are underrepresented, and so that having that sense of community, having people constantly tell you you can do it, and yeah. we believe in you, and that sort of thing, people can go and you know we've heard alumni say this time and time again that the sense of family that they felt at Diller gave them confidence and it gave them courage to move forward in their uh, careers. And when they ran into a rough spot, there was somebody from Diller that they could call right away, whether it was a, a classmate, a former professor, even a former administrator, a former president, they knew they could call someone who would help them get through some of the rougher situations. And so I think I, I think that is really one of the biggest things um, to, to really think about when it comes to a sense of community um, in college. And I think the other thing about having the sense of community in college um, is that it really helps people when they get into the workforce understand what real teamwork looks like. <laughs> so... You know, you have a lot of people, um, and a lot of us. I'm, I'm, I'm in an African American fraternity. A lot of us in the in the fraternity and sorority world, uh, um, in Black America, you know, we go into the workplace, and we're thinking to ourselves, okay, I'm not going to leave my coworker behind on this issue. I, I, I need to pull my coworker aside and help them understand something that that maybe they don't understand because I'm not going to let them go down like this. You know, so. I think that sense of community, though, coming from college um, is even more powerful because you got to see it in such a um, you got to see it in, 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 in an environment with hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. And you got to do this whole thing with hundreds of people. Um, and so I think that's why um, I think that's why having that sense of community among stakeholders is important. Yeah. And it also helps like what you touched on during the uh, podcast that I listened to with uh, Eddie Brown was that, you know, young people, depending on their background, they may come into the university with a fixed mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Have that community to help them build that growth mindset and then encourage them to see that their particular, you know, situation when they get stuck, when they have a hard time during college and they go back and say, hey, I was never good at this. Let, let it be math or let it be uh, writing or whatever it is. And you have somebody that pours into them and say, no, you can do this, right? You can grow out of this with a growth mindset perspective and help them along the way um, mm -hmm. as well, I think. Yeah. And I mean, and it, and it helps the faculty and staff too, because for us, um, it reminds us constantly that it's not about us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and that's hard to find in higher education. Um, that is very hard to find, and so yeah, I think I think having that very strong sense of community is something that really, really works for us. But even more importantly, it benefits the students. Okay, and then in your opinion, what's the best way to tell these these stories? You said that you have a written piece for the alumni, the one who graduated in the fifties. It's a big written piece. It's like a it's an alumni spotlight, I assume. Is yeah, it is is going to be um yeah it's going to be the alumni part of the alumni series that we're doing for Write Your Legacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for Gen Z, what's the best way to approach them and tell their stories? 
Well, for them is, you know, they're multimedia people, you know, so for them, I, we have to do it a couple of different ways. But for, I mean, but they they love to be able to, to, you know, one of the things about Gen Z is they like to be able to tell their own stories. So a big part of this is that we are we're trying to we're actually trying to figure out the student influencer side of this. Um, but um, but to let them to be able to tell their stories. Um, I think video really is the way for us to go on this one when it comes to uh, the students. Uh, they enjoy video and they want to be able to share it with folks and they want to be able to share it with family and friends. Um, and let's be honest, they love to see themselves on video. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the way we're going to do it. OK. And as we um, um, employ these students to share their stories, how important is it to educate your participants uh, about the importance of maintaining university brand guidelines? It is extremely important. Um, you know, we do have a script. Well, not a script, but we do have, um, you know, an ending uh, to to these um, to these spots that we're going to do, these video spots that we're going to do. But um, but it is very important because, you know, the, the analogy that I use with Dillard in particular is that we have this fantastic university concert choir. Um, and one of the things we we actually created um, a Write Your Legacy uh, brand training video. And one of the things that I said in the video is that you have all these different voices, all these different qualities, all these different approaches to singing, yet they are able to come together and sing beautifully, you know, for our annual Christmas concert. And so I think, <clears throat> excuse me, it is, it is very important for folks to realize um, that they can they can look at the campaign a little differently, obviously, because everybody's going to bring themselves to the campaign. But we all got to sing the same song. And that is something that I think is going to be incredibly important uh, for all the participants to remember. Um, but yeah, they, we, they, there will definitely be endings just about everything with some form of write your legacy, uh, whether it's written um, or whether it's on video or part of our podcast. Um, we're definitely going to make sure that folks stay uh, as on brand as possible. And I'm a big fan of storytelling, so I'll be sure to follow your, uh, you know, your content uh, about the write your legacy and learn a little bit of, from you as well from afar. Um, so that's the plan here. So last question for higher ed community pros: What are two books any communications pros should read if they want to tell better stories for their college or their university? Man, that's a good that's a good question. So you know, I, I'll tell you this: I don't necessarily always go straight for uh, the communications on marketing material um, because there's so much of it out there and so much of it's so good. I will say one marketing book that I do like. I, I don't remember the author, but it's called "Why Johnny Can't Brand." Mm -hmm. um, I actually really like that one. But the other thing, and and I really insist on this when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to Marcom folks, is we really I think we need to tap more into our leadership skills um, because we we have such a big responsibility, and we have to know every we have to know so much about our organizations, every nook and cranny of the organization. So a book that I really love uh, is is called. Uh, is by Ken Blanchard, and I can't remember the other author, but it's called The Leadership Pill. Mm -hmm. um, and that is that is one I would highly recommend because I think I think one of the things, one of the mistakes a lot of us in marketing make is that um we don't we don't take ourselves seriously as leaders. It kind of just comes along, you know, later on in discussion. You know, it's like, well, I'm doing all this marketing work. I have to know so much about the organization. I have to know this and I have to do this. You know, I got to become a leader when you really should walk into the you should walk into a situation knowing that your job is to lead. Um, and so, yeah. So those are the two books I would recommend. Why Johnny Can't Brand and The Leadership Pill. Perfect. And that's concludes the episode. I really appreciate you being on, taking time, you know, teaching me a little bit more about brand storytelling and as well as the audience. And I really appreciate you, you know, taking your time. You got it. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Definitely. I definitely do. All right. I'll be in touch and I'll follow you on your podcast. All right. Then you got it, Chris. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.